Hey, Composing Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about MIDI music theory, specifically melodies and the passing tone. Passing tone, now, I'm still wearing a hat, just so you know, and I'm again using MIDI because I find it just, I'm just going to make one video because there's no point in having two videos for the separate thing where I show like basic concepts like this. If you grab the idea, you'll be fine. Okay, so I have a previous uh, chord progression. So it's a C major, a D major, and a G major, and again, it sounds like this. And we're gonna layer up a melody on top. So what's the cool thing about uh, passing tones? Well, passing tones are arguably the most fundamental embellishment tone ever. Like they're used everywhere. What is a passing tone? A passing tone is where we have some goal notes. So I'm moving in the key of C right here. I'm gonna put a C down. And then I wanna get to some goal tone. And so my goal tone is gonna be a G. And you won't necessarily think like, oh, when I'm writing my melody, what's my goal tone, la la la. You're simply gonna put down two tones and you're gonna realize, holy crap, I've got this huge cavern of space between these that I could do stuff. Maybe you've already written stuff, but then you realize this would be a good chance for me to introduce some uh, embellishments of some kind in between, make it more interesting. And so, the passing tone is simply you fill in tones between C and G to get from one tone to the next tone. So it's really simple. They can be uh, chromatic. They can be um, they can be diatonic. It doesn't matter. And but you do want to choose your notes with your knowledge of harmony and how things work. And then I'm also gonna reveal some things to you on why some things will work. So I'm gonna put down some notes and explain why I'm putting down those notes. So first I have C and I want to get to G and the space isn't too big. So I can I can go with something that's pretty scale like and then scales scales sound good. And so we have C and I'm gonna put down a D. Now a D does not line up in this chord. You see in the chord we have uh, no D. It's a C major chord, but it would make a suspended, well, it wouldn't make a suspended chord, it'd make an add chord, my bad. And, and so in that way, it's kind of interesting, but th that's not the point. The point is, it is, we wouldn't think of it as part of the chord at this point. At this point, this D is fulfilling itself as a passing tone. And so it's not a chord tone either, because I, I made it kind of sound like it was this chord tone. If it was like, if we were deliberately going for an add to chord, then it would work. But this, if this is going like beyond you, you need to go watch my previous videos where I talk about this. Most of you guys should pick up on it. Um, if you're not picking up on it, I have videos that explain this stuff. I expect you to watch it in the series. But this is fulfilling its role. The main idea right here, what I want you to be really aware of is that this is a passing tone. It's not playing part of the chord. It's playing part of the melody. We don't think of things. So for example, if I had picked an E, that's definitely in the chord. So you might be saying, oh, that's a chord tone. And it... You could look at it that way technically, but functionally, we have this idea of technical technicalities and functionally. Functionally, this is a passing tone because we're using it to get to the G. Now, I don't think it'd be as strong as an idea because we don't have too much space now to increase up to the G. So I don't want to do that. And there are names for when you go up and down with stuff like neighboring tone was one of those names. So, so it wouldn't really work for our, our passing tones. Passing tones move in one direction. And now I have several passing tones. Uh, I'll give you a couple more examples of passing tones in a little bit, but I'm going to put a D here because it fits diatonically and it, in, it induces the C major scale, which is something that we, that is familiar with. Now let's go on to our third note here. Uh, and that is going to be a E. So wh why did I pick E? Why not like F or F sharp? Because F E is a major second from D and a major second from E. F sharp. So in this way, it's going to be kind of dissonant. It's going to be like, it's, it's not going to be so nice when they play at the same time you listen to them. D and E. It doesn't sound that great. Well, there's a couple of things here that come into play. First, we just played a D. So we're kind of familiar. Our ears have heard the D and this weird thing goes on when you hear a note before it, it tends to work out. The other thing, the main reason is this F sharp doesn't come until the second beat. So we won't be invoking two major seconds at the same time. So that'll work out nice for us. And because we'll have, we'll have the D coming down here, but it's so far away, it won't really matter. The main reason this really works though, besides this being offset, is even if it was on the beat, we have a, 
a, a bigger, stronger pattern, and this is louder. This is louder because it's our melody, so generally you're going to want your melody louder, and it is a scalier progression in the key of C major after we just got done playing a C, and we gave emphasis to the tonic of our chord progression, which would be C, which is what we all focus around. So this, this, uh, this movement is going to be really powerful. So it works out. That's the principal reason why it works. But I want to point out all these other things so that when you select notes, you have better idea, you have better idea of why certain things work a certain way. And also, with the other notes you could choose, that would be interesting to put down. You Now you have some like ideas like, oh, if I put this note here, these things, because of like how this is arranged and la 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 la, that's how it works. So we have this. Now on this next one, and again, this even though this is in the key of C, and it's not in this key. Let's see, if it was over here, we we strictly look at this as if it were a passing tone. Now here, I'm gonna go chromatic. Why chromatic? Well, if I do an F, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be. First off, it's a whole step resolution, which doesn't sound near as cool as a half step resolution. Half step. If you can do a half step resolution, you should pretty much pick half step. It is so nice, like the way it sounds. It's very very powerful. Now the other thing is, I'm clashing with an F sharp and a F and that so two chord and we're going to go from a major chord to clashing to some sort of like is it major or minor because I just threw in this chord right here it's going to sound really gross if I play this watch it just does not sound good but if I choose F sharp I know even though it's not in my key at all uh, that doesn't matter. It's being used as a melodic content to get to G. It fits as a chord tone, but remember, we're not using it as a chord tone. We're using it as a passing tone. So technically, you're correct, but functionally, that's not what it serves, so we don't look at it from that perspective. It's really important. Other things in music theory go the same way, where we look at this idea of its functional purpose versus this like technical what it is type deal. We're like, oh yeah, it has that property, but that's not what we're using it for right now. And that's part of the reason why some more advanced concepts can get so darn confusing. Okay, so we have this F sharp, and it works because it's in the chord, but we're using it as a passing tone. It may not be in the diatonic key of C major, but it doesn't matter because it follows the harmonic structure of what we're doing. And then we resolve up to a G. So this is going to sound really nice. So let's uh, play this. That's a very nice thing. Now, passing tones don't have to be these like big scalier runs. Sometimes you'll see them as little like chromatic runs, like these crazy little guys that look somewhat like this. Um, especially like. You'll see stuff like this sometimes. And it's it's really powerful because it follows a very, a very strong pattern. So even though it doesn't like really fit in the pattern, you could use this at moments of your song and it will it will sound just fine. However, it does sound kind of like uh, a little strange. So I'm not gonna use that. It's not the vibe that I'm going for, which is a whole nother thing. Like you pick the notes according to the mood you're trying to establish. Excuse me. And uh, okay, so let's talk about, there's one other kind of passage I wanna show you, which is just this one. So you go, let's say we wanna go G to uh, what is it? I'm working in, uh, this is going to be a D, so I'm going to go C, and then I want to reach an F sharp, right? Well, an easy way to deal with this is just do that. And then let's just say I want to hold that F sharp, and then I want to resolve up to a G and hold it out. So it's a very simple melody, uh, but maybe it's what we want. Maybe it's easy to sing. Maybe it's the melody is not the focus right now. It's all about what the singers are saying as words or what tones the textures all i'm saying is like simple people will oftentimes overwrite melodies it doesn't always have to be that complicated uh, a lot more stuff can draw interest than just the harmonic movement of a track so here this is our passing tone even though it fits as a chord tone it's passing tone because we're using it to get to f sharp so you can have really small ones it doesn't have to be big so So you see, very simple. So that's the passing tone. You'll see them literally everywhere. Like there'll be there'll be so many places, and people can people get really specific. Like I was pointing out all these things. Generally, people intuitively grasp a lot of this, and they're like, "Oh, it's just a like I, I'm not gonna go through and be like, oh yeah, because of this, that, that, that. Like like that'll all happen in my head like 
like that because I know my scales and stuff and I, and I understand these principles. So all that stuff I said out loud is going to realistically happen way faster because I memorize my scales and I know how things work and chords. And so that's if you want this to be useful, you're going to have to do that. And you can you can see the patterns easy, more easily too. Another thing that is um, that makes this more useful is people just look at it. They'll just say it's a passing tone. They don't get like freaking crazy specific when they're like, oh, this is a C, but this E is a diatonic. Um, what is it? Third third tone passing in the diatonic key of C. Blah blah blah. Yeah, you get so crazy and like give it all these like extra qualities that you're listing about it and that's good for being conscious of it when you want to learn you should do that stuff and observe these qualities as they shift and change but you want to get to a point where it's intuitive and so a lot of, you'll see people just say oh that's just a passing tone it's whatever passing tone and it'll go on and on so if you have any questions about this let me know subscribe and have a blessed day